Hey guys, Chad here, back on the bench, and uh, this is the Immersion RC Vortex. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, show uh, how to change out the Vortex camera. Now I have one of these uh, 5 to 22 volt uh, mini uh, cameras laying around. It's the same one that everybody is ordering from uh, Surveil Zone. It is that one right there. 600 TVL. It's uh, CCD. So um, let's get some comparison first. I've got the Vortex torn apart here and we'll go through all that here later. But uh, let's take a look at uh, how, what the, the CMOS camera looks like. So there's our video screen. And, you know, we can uh, put it into the dark. Let me bring this a little closer so you can see. We can put it over here into the dark into the light, uh, everything else. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to do. And uh, turn the overhead light off, see how fast it gets and see how grainy the video is. Um, you know, trying to compensate uh, for the light. And then we can pop it back on and uh, see how it changes and see how washed out it is. So there is your comparison for the CMOS. So let's plug in the run cam again and we'll go through or whoever makes this and we'll go through uh, how to put this in and switch it out and everything. Obviously, this isn't the best demonstration. I have an NT NTSC one, so I need to uh, switch this back to NTSC. All right. So, here we go. Um, you can see already that uh, the color is a lot better and sharper uh, just because, you know, the CCD is more sensitive. And uh, let's try our uh, light test here. Does real good in the dark. And if we point back that way where it's really dark. We're pretty much getting the light that we can see. Um, we're getting some noise and pixelation, but not as much as we were before. All right, let's flick the light back on, and there you go, right there. That's the example that you want to see. There's no delay at all, and the image is not washed out. I can point it directly at the light, turn it back on, and the image is not washed out. So for anybody that says that it's not worth upgrading your camera, that right there. So basically that's going to be you flying into the direct sunlight and then turning away from the sunlight and then turning back into it with no delay. All right, let me get set back up here and we'll move along. All right, now the first thing you want to do is take the old camera out. That is easily achieved by two screws, which are right here and here, that will release this entire mechanism, which had this one on there. And then you will want to remove on the top here and the bottom, you'll want to remove one, two, three 
screws of the side here. You don't really need to do the fourth one. Just be careful that you don't break it. On the bottom, it's going to be the same thing, but these two screws right here that go through the carbon plate and then through the body, um, they are going to be a little bit longer. So just be careful that uh, you don't uh, get those uh, confused. So those will be your two longer screws. So this right here is the actual cable that's coming out. And if you look at the back of the camera here, you can see you have a five volt ground and video. And if you look at the back of the surveillance camera, you have five volts to 20 ground video and OSD. As luck would have it for people that hate soldering and everything, there is no soldering that needs to be done. This will simply push right into place here and click right in. You'll have a little bit of a gap left over, but it's no big deal. Before you do all that though, you're going to have to take this off, take this off of here and you're going to need to focus your camera and you're going to need to hook it up to a video source and run through your settings. Uh, so that way you can set it up for color and set up your gamma and sharpness and all that stuff how you like. It. Um, so you're definitely going to want to do that. You're going to get this uh, OSD cable, which basically is just going to plug into there. You have to do that this way because there's only one connection on here. So... You have to do all this first. So the best thing to do is, is to get that all hooked up. Uh, the camera is the OSD cable is basically going to come just like this. So you're going to need a BNC to RCA adapter, which will click on there. Then you will need a regular RCA cable to go from here to your monitor. And then you'll need um, a center positive, which pretty much all of our FPV receivers and transmitters and everything are anything from five to 20, uh, what, 20, five to 20 volts. So 3S battery. So if you got a ground station set up, you just basically need to probably go get a BNC to uh, adapter. I had them because I'm running a crap DVR that uses them. So it worked out perfect for me. So while you're doing your OSD setup and everything, you're going to want to unscrew this lens all the way out, unscrew this lens all the way out, and get this here, your tilting piece from the Vortex, put it on there, and you're going to need to loosen this up, take it out, we'll take this out all the way, um, bring in the focus ring a little bit, loosen it up, put that thing on there, turn everything down, and get your camera focused. Um, and then when you're focused, everything's gonna be super tight, no wiggle back and forth. And then uh, after that, you're pretty much uh, good to go. You're ready to put it back in. Um, I found the easiest way to do this is to basically pull this wire out, pull your video wire out all the way, and then feed it through the quad so basically you can hook up the camera first and you want to also make sure that you are staying clear and running it um, the right way from your antenna and from this little piece that's going to bend down to push down your video card so you don't want to get it have it you don't want to have it all hung up in there so make sure it's just running along this side right here really good so basically just snake it right back up through there where we always see it um get your uh, cables your polarities lined up uh, your voltage is going to be on the bottom and everything oh and make sure that you no matter what camera you have make sure you uh, know which way is up 
before you uh, put it back on. That'll make thing, life a little bit easier on you. You don't want to put this thing on and find out it's upside down. That would suck really bad. So there's that. And pulled my wire through a little bit too much there. Nothing ever goes right when you're doing it on video. It's always a lot easier than actually in real life. But just trying to do this the easiest way without taking out all these screws and taking off the top plate and everything else. Okay, there we go. I got it through. So what you want to do now that you have it through is go ahead and reinstall the camera I've got two screws here this is like a 1.5 millimeter I think it's really small I'm trying to do this over the GoPro here Get one of them started. Don't tighten it down all the way. Oh, find your second screw, which uh, is around here somewhere. So you definitely want to be a little bit better prepared than I am. So anyway, I'll find it. Um. This can only go one way. The little white notch sticks out. So it's pretty hard to stick in there. So what just what I've been doing is kind of bending it a little bit, grabbing some of these right angles, 45 pliers, and I said the pressures of doing everything on video you can see this isn't rocket science but it could be a little tedious so there you go all back in and then you can see here got the camera um, it's not in all the way still need to find that other screw but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down all right now I'm going to put the rest of these screws back in and come back and show you how to deal with this. And then we'll test her out again. Be right back. All right, probably the hardest part right here. Got all the screws installed except for this one right here. Basically, we need to push this all the way in and align that hole with that hole. And this is the springy attachment that basically holds down the video transmitter from coming out of the socket. So what you want to do is just get some kind of a pointy object and basically just force that sucker in there. You're not gonna hurt not gonna hurt anything, thankfully. Except for your pride on this video. Let's see, how did I do this earlier? This is one of those cases where you really need three hands. Get the screw ready. Put that in there. Oh, you. the worst part I'll have to edit this out but just showing you some real world problems here but I would rather do this than have to unscrew all these screws on top and then still have to end up doing that 
Alright. Got there. Tighten it down. Don't need to crank these down. Boom. Done. Everything's reinstalled. There's our camera. You can see. Let me get some more light down here. That uh, it tilts up and down. No problems. If you look back in there, I think you can see the wire. The wire has plenty of slack. Um, it's right there. It's not being tugged on or anything else. So, moment of truth. Grab the monitor. Fire it up. Make sure everything works. Voila, there we go. One Vortex with a CCD camera upgrade. So, that's it. Hope you guys liked the video. Like, subscribe. There'll be a lot more coming. Um, everybody knows uh, that there's a lot going on with this mini quad stuff. So uh, check out some of my modeling videos. Um, that's it. We'll see you later.